Hi, so there's a new feature uh, on Wi-Fi um, from a few months ago where you can now add the language of your paternal ancestor, or if this is uh, also on the mtDNA tree, your maternal ancestor. So uh, here's an example. There's a sample in my haplogroup J2BL283 from Greece, Castoria. This is a region, a mountainous region of uh, what's called Macedonia, part of Greece, in the northwest part of Greece. Uh, he had indicated um, that his most distant known ancestor, paternal ancestor, spoke Bulgarian. Uh, it's interesting to, to, to know what language that your ancestor spoke because there's different groups that moved around uh, and may have different origins. That being said, um, I've seen some uh, comments from researchers who are right in uh, being a little skeptical about, well, how reliable is it to uh, uh, trust the language uh, of as being indicative, the language of your most distant and common ancestor? How reliable is it to trust that uh, over the location where they were born? Uh, it, uh, in, in looking at where may they may their ancestors have been from before that, are were they really from the place that the that would be indicated by where the language is from? So do, does this mean this guy's paternal ancestor should be considered to have come from Bulgar, Bul Bulgaria, or should we just stop at uh, Castoria? Uh, my algorithm, I'm Hunter Proven. I developed a phylogeographer. Um, it's, uh, it's a data-driven um, system that calculates, computes theoretical migrations based on uh, samples, geolocated samples. Phylogeographer is uh, using the locations. Uh, well, what I mean to say is these regional codes that have flags on Wifel tree I, I have uh, figured out which location should represent that regional code. I'm not, phylogeographer is not using these languages. Uh, maybe there could be some way I could incorporate the languages in the future, um, but I'm not trying to do that right now because it's not, it's not completely reliable. Uh, what I mean is in one generation, uh, your descendant could... Uh, it, it only takes nine months for a child to be born speaking a different language than their father, even though they live in the same place. It just takes a man to be with a woman who is speaking a different language than him. This is pretty easy to happen. You can change your religion, your ethnic identity, your language very uh, from father to son very easily. Uh, yeah, there can be continuity as well, but it, but it can change. Still, um, I think that this language feature is very good, even if I'm not even using it in Phylogeographer right now, and even if I never even use it in Phylogeographer, uh, because it gives people an option to indicate their ethnicity uh, while at the same time indicating a regional code. Uh, what I mean, uh, let me say this more clearly. We've got this uh, sample that is Armenian in my haplogroup at the very base of the of JL283. Uh, he's basal JL283. He's negative for all known downstream subclades. Uh, he, his most distant known, this guy's most distant known paternal ancestor was Armenian, but he wasn't from the modern borders of uh, Armenia, the modern state of Armenia. He didn't put a regional code here because he's not from one of the regions of Armenia, of modern Armenia. It's He's from uh, a place in Anatolia uh, called Harput. Um, but be because he's Armenian, he doesn't want there's some cultural there's some cultural sensitivity here he doesn't he probably doesn't feel comfortable putting a turkish flag on his sample uh 
maybe because of the ethnic cleansing of his people, it would be if he couldn't put if he couldn't signify on the Wifel tree anything of his Armenian identity, then maybe he uh, he has a sensitivity there, which uh, which I'm not saying is unjustified. Uh, so he's put Armenia there. But now that there's this language uh, option on Wifel, uh, <clears throat> he can show that he is uh, his ancestors spoke Armenian language, but were living in a specific region of what is now Turkey. Uh, yeah, whether he chooses to do this or not uh, is his choice. Uh, and all I'm and all I want to say is this language feature can be useful for research for researchers because if people uh in even even in places that didn't have ethnic cleansing in the last uh century there's people from uh i think i think i've seen uh, uh in the chat groups people from different regions of england or, or the united kingdom people from wales or maybe from scotland didn't want to use uk the didn't want to have the uh the english flag or or uh I can't remember what 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 the sensitivity was about, but they didn't they didn't want they didn't like the flag the Wifel tree had uh, to represent their place within the British Isles, and um, uh, so so anyway uh, the the good thing that comes out of these language codes, in my opinion, is uh, it gives people a uh, a way to express the ethnicity or language of their most distant known ancestor to decouple that from the geographic origin of their most distant known ancestor. And this is good for research because now there's two different pieces of information that can be dis can be uh, publicly available and it's up to researchers to decide what they're going to do with it. Uh, sorry, it was kind of a bit ramble rambling way to say it.